Hey guys, my name is Hasher and I am a user experience designer, meaning I design and develop applications, websites, and games for clients across the world. Now, in this video, we'll be systematically understanding the problems and what we can do to tackle the problems of traditional educational institutions and uh, now i am based in india a lot of these examples might be related to india but i did uh, but i did my education in sweden as well my master's education i did my master's in user experience design and i did my bachelor's in computer science uh, and engineering and uh, yeah I, I, I did my school over here in india so that's a little bit of a background so just so that's that's put out there now in this video we'll be understanding the problem from different people's perspective the different stakeholders perspective from the perspective of the student the teachers and even the perspective of the organization the structure itself with what the educational institutions attempt at doing so if we can understand the structural goals then we can understand okay maybe things need to be changed at a very fundamental level or maybe they don't um so the basic problem or the discussion or, or the point that this discussion stems from is from these two points is that you know the schools today are basically at least as of today they're incredibly static and time bound so what that means is that for example the things that you are taught today the curriculum that that's designed today is incredibly difficult for those concepts to be relevant 10 years from now because the rate at which the world is progressing now is a lot faster than let's say 10 years ago or the generation before us witnessed and the reason for that is because it's not just the things that are being that are, that are being innovated today but the rate the speed at which the things are being innovated so how can we produce more timeless values or time you know how, how can we teach people to to be able to 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 sort of how can we teach children to sort of uh to sort of use concepts at school you know, in, in our actual workforce, things that are relevant to the workforce. The thing with static and time bound, uh, you know, values is that they're extremely, they affect the balance of workforce and skills, at, uh, you know, at, at the work, uh, at the, or the marketplace or the workplace. And the reason is that it not only does it affect the quantitative nature of the of the workforce, like too many engineers, too many lawyers, not, not, not only that, but that's not just the only problem. The biggest problem is also the qualitative and the time at which the workforce is coming. So, for example, uh, at this time, we don't need a lot of data centers, right? Uh, India, in a lot of American TV shows, used to be ridiculed for being a place of uh, uh, call centers, like the data centers, uh, not data centers, but call centers. But I, I don't know if uh, you know, call centers are really uh, a thing anymore, but again, uh, in the future, with a lot of uh, technologies that artificial intelligence and machine learning are going to bring us, I don't know how long those industries would so, would actually survive. So the question that comes up is, you know, is is, is not just the, the quantity of the people, but do we have the right quality of the people? Do we have brilliant engineers? Do we have a balance of workforce? Do we have enough engineers? Do we have enough? like innovative engineers, think engineers who are proud of doing what they want, who are happy to do what they want. Do we have happy doctors? Do we have, uh, do we have people like who, like for example, at this time, we need to have more user experience designer and system thinker because a lot of times that's producing imbalance. The thing with systems thinking, which is kind of what I'm trying to do here, is uh, I'm trying to plot out, uh, when, when you think about holistic, thing, when, you, when you talk about, when you, when you think about systems thinking, what you're trying to do is understanding different concepts in relation to the whole, uh, you're understanding the, the systems as a whole as opposed to understanding different elements, breaking them down, and then constituting the um, the implication. That's, that's not what we're doing here. We're trying to understand the system as a whole. When we're doing that, one of the things that's happening is that, you know, is that we're trying to, we're trying to produce a balance. That's balanced loop is basically the goal of systems thinking is how can we produce a balanced amount of, you know, workforce in the society. So that's, that's, that's useful for, you know, the country and 
the world as a whole. So dynamic thinking uh, is, is a thing or will be a thing because of three reasons. And one of the reasons, I, as I've already talked about, is because you want to produce balance of workforce and skills. And that's because we have a lot of more problems. With uh, industrial revolution being a thing and modernization and, okay, industrial revolution was a thing, again, if you look at the, the, the age of enlightenment and modernization, uh, when we had enlightenment thinkers sort of uh, breaking down the traditional structures of religion and all and, and especially in the western civilization we had um a lot of subconcepts like individualism capitalism um and and, and and several other things just coming to, as a result of modernization at the top so when we when we had the age of enlightenment one of the things that came that that gave rise to is we need to progress the society we need to raise our standard of living and for that we need to become industrial and for that gave rise to something called individualism because uh, if a society is organized individually then we can be able to we, we can basically not only market solutions but we can we can gain more people from the workforce and then we can progress our societies everybody can be making money and we can basically you know increase the standard of living so that's the idea of capitalism is that it tried to basically alleviate the standard of everybody and gives a chance for everybody to be uh, I guess um, uh, to basically benefit from the the, the, uh, the the things that the society has to offer us so um, Capitalism is a system of democracy, the system that everybody can be a part, of, can become a participant of, you know, contributing to the uh, to the functioning of the state. So, uh, so capitalism also gave birth to individual thinking and individual uh, thing. So, industrial revolution, basically the in the industrial workplace, especially back in in early 1900s or the 1800s. Uh, one of the things that happened is it, when the industrial revolution took place. In what predicted success in industrial workplace was the trait of agreeableness. Are you agreeable to the people who are running these industries? But at schools, because we needed to have more children who followed this thing, uh, the school, the job of the school, the structural goal of the schools, at least about 100 or 200 years ago, was basically to produce people or children who are basically obedient to the workforce. So the thing that basically at the top of the pyramid was agreeableness. So the thing that uh, industrial revolution sort of produced as a result was a thing called digital revolution, and that gave birth to internet. So what internet allows us to do is it, it made the world a, a much smaller place. It gave birth to globalization. It gave uh, it gave birth to the remote working spirit where we are able to where I'm able to talk to you guys from I don't know which part of the world you are in and and when we have this cultural clash you know like one of the things we're we're, we're, we're often uh, witnessing today is you know we're not able to understand different cultures or different systems we're not able to map out different systems because we were taught time bound values not time less values right so how can we understand different perspectives and understand and build mental models of the system so not only is that a problem but the problem is that the, the 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 thing that internet is doing is that it, it's allowing people to work from anywhere and any, any, anyhow. Not only that, but the thing that the, the the computers are today allowing us to do is that the thing that computers can do today are the things that the workforce were supposed to do a hundred or two hundred years ago, which is follow instructions. Today, computers follow instructions, so you can give instructions. Like for example, if you know programming, you can you can create an app that allows uh, that 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 basically converts currency now basically a few years ago maybe we had people who converted currency for you but today we don't need people to do that we have computers that can do that so the, the job of a human today if you if you are not aware of it already is today it's thinking and the job of thinking was not in schools before and the job of articulation and innovation so one of the thing as I mentioned earlier is the uh, trait of agreeableness now articulation of or, uh, or the telling of truth like for example if I really want to tell what I'm really thinking that requires you to be a little disagreeable because some of the things that I will uh, or, or maybe most of the things or maybe a lot of things are, that I'm saying in this video will not sync well or, or things that 
that you know that you don't agree with. So you need to have a little bit of you know disagreeable listing in you so that you can negotiate and and find out a middle ground where you can where you can live with the society. Now in a society, if you if you really want to be having let's say a a, a balanced uh, ecosystem there's two system there's two circles okay there's one circle which is you, whatever you your ambitions and here is a society's ambitions now if you want to be a participant of the society there needs to be a overlap right so this the thing that in that in between that that's what that, that's that's what basically allows you to be a participant in the society but you still need to have your own ambitions you still need to have uh, the society the society will have its own ambitions what you need to build a picture and a mental model that you know there is a, there exists a system there exists me i need to exist with the society so i need to understand the model and in order to do that one of the things you need to do is you need to be able to negotiate so you can get up and you know build your way up out there not only that but also when you do innovation, one of the problem with you know overall development is a thing that schools really try to do a lot, and they're doing a pretty good job at it. But one thing that schools today can do is when you know we we have a very uh, moderated system. So what that means is if you if you're interested to learn about this in detail, there's a psychologist by the name of Jonathan Haidt. Okay, is his the spelling goes as follows: It's J O N A T H A N. H A I D T. Now, uh, in his in one of his talks and or discussions or podcasts, he talks about this uh, his suggestion, which is, you know, if we can have a system where children are, children are allowed to play in a in a in a very natural setting with their friends, and let's say the children get hurt, there there should be somebody you know who is basically responsible for first aid kits and stuff like to to heal the children, but let the child go and reach out to the to the to, to the uh, the teacher or whoever is responsible for let's say helping the kid so the, te- the the kid has to go out and seek for help that way you build a model that uh, mental model that's you know sort of they're used to this model of this world because this world will not run and just simply come up to you for help sometimes you have to go seek out now how much you have to go seek out that's again different depending on your conditions and factors but the ability to blend tools okay so what that means is dynamic knowledge gathering so what that means is for example if you give timeless values like an example would be if i give you a task like for example can we innovate a system uh, can we can we can we create a robot okay if the if the teachers gave you a task of creating a robot and selling it to the market one of the things that you and your teams have to figure out is not only the way to somehow collectively put out your ideas and sort of work together not only that you have to figure out how you can buy the parts how you can distribute work how you can sell your product how you can make a product that somebody wants how can you find their customers how can you negotiate with customers the things that you actually will go through now the thing that a lot of people will criticize schools is that we don't have enough specialized people well yes and no well basically if you are an athlete as i mentioned you will come across time when you want to grow if you want to grow from an athlete to something else if you are not somebody who has enough skills at your at your disposal then your growth will become static which means that you can't progress because you can't be a leader if you don't if you don't empathize and understand being an entrepreneur requires you to have a little trait called jack of all trades you need to be a little bit of a jack of all trades you need to understand different things and you need to be able to understand the different languages so you can facilitate and give tasks to people if you want to be able to do that you need to be able to blend different tools right so that's an important thing now one of the, the other things that's happening is that there are more problems that are arising as a result of uh, of of of, dy- uh, of you know dynamic thinking or i mean as as a result of modern education there are lots of problems there are radical ideas there are a lot of movements there are more economic uh, calamities and there are a lot of imbalances in the social economic conditions so when this becomes a thing, the, the, the thing that, that you are faced with is when you have globalization uh, becoming a problem these days, when you have one problem and you have another problem coming up, you need to figure out how you can bring things to balance or how you can, how you can face situations that have 
tremendously com complex, you know, consequences and tremendously complex structures. So how can you cope up with those? So understanding things from modern education from teachers' perspective. So what exactly do uh, do teachers think this is important? Is well understanding principles. So can uh, can. I think the, the, the students need to understand the Newton's first law, the Newton's second law, the Newton's third law. You know, they need to understand Pythagoras' theorem. And all those you know, basically principles that basically govern a lot of physical, uh, the physics around our space. So, and beyond. So skills, also developing skills. So one of the things is physical competency. So things like, for example, sports, fitness, and, and, and you know, one of the jobs of uh, of the teachers is also to be able to for that for that the student is able to do things physically like for example work things take this thing put it there you know even in in traditional institutions like for example uh, even if your even if your schools are horrible one of the reasons why schools are successful today the reason why it still continues to be is because one thing the schools do really well is that there is something called an overall, uh, uh, like as I talk about overall development. Where is that? Oh yeah, over here. One of the things that the online education, it, the one of the things that is lacking is that you know, when you talk about education, even if the effectiveness of the solution that, that the traditional solutions are extremely weak, they offer one thing that's extremely powerful, and that is that they have an overall development. Now. Whether or not that's effective is a different thing. The thing is that they, they allow, well, like what? For example, they facilitate sports and fitness. Well, how can traditional institutions, I mean, online institutions do that? Okay, well, if they do that, then good enough. Maybe they're successful, maybe they're not. But the fact that if you are in a school, you're put into an environment, into a system, into a system that either you have to complement or you have you are compre you already complemented or you have to complement so when you're put into a system you have to understand okay how can I live with it so when you're living with it you have to not only understand how to how to learn things but you know how can I eat here how can I how can I you know feed myself how can I cooperate with other people how can I build myself so that's social fitness and everything else so skills like physical competency so even in traditional institutions, Teachers might ask you to go, go tell the go tell the other teacher this message. So the teacher, I mean, the, the child goes. Even if you're an introvert, you have to do certain things. You have to rub the boards. You have to like you know, like you have to you have to be on time and all that stuff. So those are basically things that you might you might think are cliche or boring and things that are unnecessary. But that's one of the reasons why schools are successful, or sort of, uh, or at least partially successful for being, uh, you know, at least they're suffice. I mean, they're they're living so far at this time. The reason is because of those, because they teach you different things when you're put into a complex system, and also thinking. Okay, thinking articulation in my job is uh, uh, is in my opinion a, a skill that that that. that that uh, that students need to have, which is articulation. Okay, so you know one of the things that's amazing is when I when I say the word elevator, uh, you are able, you and I are approximately able to build a similar picture. Although if you think about it, when I say the word elevator, you might be thinking elevator in in your home. I might be thinking about elevators in a shopping mall in somewhere near myself, near me. But the fact that you and I are able to communicate, and we're able to, you know, sort of uh, think about the similar thing, and we're able to, you know, uh, we're able to build a, a mediary structure and sort of uh, progress from there is amazing. So, not only being able to articulate thoughts is important, but to be able to build from those thoughts is important. So the most fundamental thing that the teachers have to teach today is to think. Okay, so organizational responsibility. So in from uh, the responsibilities of a teacher is to keep the students safe today. Now safe again is, 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 is for, for example, what does safe really mean here? Safe really mean here is basically protection from physical harm, but even mental harm. So basically trying to keep them away from sensitive subjects. Now, there, there is a concept called anti-fragility in, in, uh, that Jonathan Haidt actually introduced, which is that you know, 
that the students will not be exposed to uncomfortable topics. Well, the job of uh, a traditional, I, I'm talking about, uh, let's say, uh, of, 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 uh, of an educational institution like a university is to facilitate discussions of uncomfortable topics, let's say controversial topics. Now, if that ecosystem or if that system is made uncomfortable or, I'm sorry, are made, let's say, are, you know, classroom is a system or it, or is, is a place where things sh should be discussed okay but there are again I, this is where this thing of freedom of speech again comes into uh, into picture here so the way this is sort of this the this, this system of classroom is sort of um, is put into picture is is because of of a of a thing in Western civilization called freedom of speech. The fact that you can that you can think and say whatever you uh, whatever you're thinking. The the justification or the reasoning that people give why freedom of speech is important is because only if you're able to to articulate your thoughts as weakly as possible, then you can. That, that, that you can progress because none of us are perfect so none of us have perfect thoughts but only if you're able to think uh, only if you're able to tell our imperfect thoughts we can progress that is provided if you have a reasonable uh, you know there are reasonable limitations on freedom of speech which we'll talk about later it's not exactly you know for example are, it's a big question like are there limitations to freedom of speech the reason I'm coming to that is because Again, keeping students safe. We're not talking about just physical harm, but we're talking about harm like what kind of things can we talk at schools, right? Um, now, we'll talk about that in the, in the dedicated video if you're interested, so you can leave them in the comment section below. If there is enough demand for it, I will make a video about it. But basically, there are limitations. But fundamentally, at the outset, the thing is, well, how are the arguments really placed? Are there really structures to freedom of speech? So, for example, um, things like how, like the the, the 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 classroom is supposed to facilitate debate and open and rational discussions. So, how can you build a system like that? That should be the discussion, as opposed to can we peddle propaganda just because you're able to give a right? Now, propaganda can be something that is right and can be wrong. Uh, maybe right fluently, but maybe I'm sorry, uh, fluke by fluke. But uh, but but if you're wrong, you're basically peddling misinformation. So how can you? How can freedom of speech be can be preserved without spreading misinformation? Is really my question. So that should be a topic for another video, right? So follow syllabus. Okay, so that's the job basically that you know is producing uh, results. As I said, you guys, the academic system basically wants to produce, you know, uh, want, like you know, schools want to produce, give you to universities, and they give you GPAs and awards that will basically get into that will basically allow you to get into a good universities personal development professional development basically how to write letters uh, how to apply for jobs and stuff like that things I guess those things are taught at school but analytical things as well and analytical skills as well so yeah structural goal sometimes schools are also uh, are also influenced by religion so religious agenda so that can allow for people to have more followers conversions can be facilitated to, towards that, or people in a society if there are not people, if there are people who are not religious, um, a revivalism of any uh, of any religious structure could also be the agenda of uh, of any schools because structural goals could I mean they could they could also have a religious agenda. Now the percentage of religious agenda is not really discussed in this in in any of my videos. So religious agenda could be more than half percentage of why the school was uh, was shaped in the first place. But it could be everything that the the school wants to do is they just want to do religious agenda. So sometimes a structure a culture anything that is uh, is misrepresented or sort of uh, or not represented enough or properly so that's why the revivalism thing is created uh, as part of the school's agenda so to try to and also revivalism sometimes people outside of that identity people belonging to that identity 
join the schools so if you are not for example if it's a christian school and if you're not a christian like myself uh, i'm not a christian by the way <laughs> so uh if, if you're not a christian then at least you will develop sympathy for that religion or or the, that minority if that's uh, if that, that, that's one of the agendas or also to promote orthodoxy as i mentioned here enlightenment so so basically what that means is 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 people is for example institutions that want to create religious institutions in order to promote understanding of their of their site so for example if there is a culture that is extremely misrepresented or uh, are underrepresented, one of the things that people try to do is, okay, come live with us, and I'll teach you. I'll tell you what exactly is how how things work here. Or things can be polarized. So the thing is, well, let's try to uh, let's try to make this the agenda of the whole country, or maybe let's try to polarize the system, and that we want this to become a thing. Uh, in the whole future so that could also be a goal now acceptable in the, in the student society so basically uh, there's as I mentioned here when I say in a student society what that means is how can the how can schools basically produce uh, uh, you know the workforce that are being acceptable by the uh, how can the, how can the schools produce people who are suitable for the workforce or accepted by the workforce so those can you know the the students can go on to you know join jobs or they can go and qualify for universities so from universities they either get qualified for jobs or and they get experience from their jobs and they cre either create companies or they join other companies they either get promoted because of the skills that you were taught okay so for example things like you know uh, professionalism moral values and so on and so forth from schools or they get frustrated they go overseas they get educated again they get new culture and they get adopted into new cultures now or they, they get frustrated they go to another company and the reason I'm saying this is because uh, one of the things that happens when uh, when you one of the things when you that happens when you, uh, especially when you go to a new country, is you try to uh, you face a culture of backlash, right? Or when when other when other people from other countries immigrate to your country, then it becomes um, a a difficult situation to understand people because um, it. As I mentioned earlier, one of the things that will happen when you join a company and when you get frustrated is you really want to exit out of the system. Now, when you exit out of the system, you have two options, okay? One is you can go to another country or another system and learn from that system and bring that system over here and reform the system. Or what you can do is just become a part of that system. So you could say one is selfish, one is not selfish, but that's that's up to you uh, because again that's bounded by other factors and that's why I say it's perspective driven because that's a perspective driven idea because if you really want I mean if you if you want to go and and if you want to join other because your, your company is just you know for example you, everybody if your profession is not respected really well for example if you are a game designer in India as of right now it's not a very welcome profession or even if it's uh, or even if there are game designers in India they're not really well paid or at least the uh, let's say if you are maybe not the the 0.01 percent of the of the game designers most of the game designers are not extremely well paid so you can go ahead and join other societies or you can go join other systems and then come back here and create a company that sort of uh, that sort of uh, mimics that system and reform the other system as a whole or you can go ahead and create companies as well entrepreneurship allows uh, people and yourself to debate thinking discussion resources you create resources you create new environments and that's what I said is you can go to other cultures you can go create new systems and bring that system here and create new skills here and create a new company and those companies facilitate new, way, new ways of thinking new ways of debating new discussions new kinds of resources things that that, that politicians could use to sort of understand okay maybe you know think that for example artificial intelligence deep fakes all of these are new topics of discussion which will become an issue maybe a few years now uh, uh, especially in politics because fake 
Okay, we already talked about this topic of fake news, so I'm not going to go into it, but basically things like technologies also facilitate towards some chaos. So if you want to understand all of that, I'm not trying to de-promote it I'm, because I am a part of the tech industry as well. Like there are, I mean, none of the technologies were introduced in the intention of promoting harm. Not none, but, but, but companies, big companies like Facebook, Apple, although they're vilified in, in a lot, in many, in many sides of the societies, no, most, I guess, I don't know if I can say most, but a lot, I guess, okay, so a lot of companies don't start companies to, um, uh, don't start companies to basically, to, to degrade the society or to sort of denigrate the society. The idea of companies is to make, uh, to solve problems and make things better. But because of the short-sightedness, they try to create more problems as a result. So things are like unforeseen circumstances. Okay, so environment. So they also you create a new environment for the thinking. And uh, so qualify you for universities. Now, uh, universities leads to entrepreneurship. They create new university thinking. Uh, and they they facilitate all of these things here. Participation in growing the economy and cross-cultural mingling. Now, one of the things that universities, especially global universities, do these days is they 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 give you a system where you can uh, where you can sympathize and sort of uh, and be and befriend people from other cultures and and something that is very difficult to achieve in, in let's say at school systems or things outside of universities. So let's say if you live in Europe or if you live in the UK or US, uh, you're probably not going to invite people from people you know, that's from areas you don't really know. Like you're not going to invite strangers, somebody who just came yesterday to your home. So, and so a best place is universities. Universities facilitate. I mean, they get money for, you know, giving them a system to learn and to, I guess, to come to this country. Um, and you benefit from, from benefiting, I mean, you, you benefit from, from understanding uh, people from a culture you do, you've, never, you know, you've never been to. So cross-culture cross mingling is a thing that universities really facilitate you towards. We already discussed religious agenda, political agenda again. There are certain educational institutions that are basically part of some some political party, like especially in communist systems. So their agenda is just vote for us and we'll give you free ed uh, free education. And also influencing society. So for example, ideological lessons. So for example, um, you know, they try to gerrymander the system in order to sort of, you know, you know, to try to influence you and, and, and think about sympathize with one political party so influencing the society especially uh, the nazism time the, the, especially with the nazi and, and the, the, the hitler time when political agenda was the the biggest agenda of schools in, in germany back in those times so uh, commercial agenda again there are certain uh, schools that are basically are, are, are created to make money but for sometimes for the individual so they really want to they want to build better infrastructure, so they just want to create structure, a school that makes money, and then we can build better infrastructure so that it improves our money. And you know, and it's very similar to that of you know building religious places because they act as a status symbol, right? So um, when we talk about for the problem for the profitability of the collective. They're, they make schools and, and colleges or universities because they want to be that to be charitable. So they're doing charitable because of cultural, because you know a culture is as we talk about revivalism for representation or minimal or underrepresentation or misrepresentation, and the, people can create schools for religious purposes. So they want to build more religious infrastructure so that you know more people they they have more followers or sometimes they gain virtues. Sometimes they again revivalism or presentation of religion, but also as a status symbol. Now they want to be accepted by the the clan or the society they belong to, but also maybe to climb up the dominance hierarchy. So, for example, if you belong to a particular religious group, and then you know if you are person A and there's a person B who runs a church, and another person belong, uh, runs a a school, maybe what you want to do is you want to basically 
you know, to climb up and be respected more than the other person. Or maybe you're doing it as a as a status or being respected, regarded yourself. You want to be, you want yourself to be regarded higher in the society than your peers. So it could be, it could be because of the status symbol, right? So that's also again, you want to, you want to climb up the dominance hierarchy. So you want to become dominant in your society. So that could be a better building, a better infrastructure. Is is it could be a status symbol? It could be because you want to, you know, it's very similar to that of building more infrastructures. I just want to build more things, and I want to have I build a name for myself because I want to, I want to, you know, I want to come up right. You want to be respected and uh, understood. So, are you also individuals could, and in charitable institutions could of the collective could also be for governmental so for example the government just wants to have this uh, uh, wants to create uh, you know wants to create structures educational structures because it wants to uh, it wants to have a better public image just to say listen I did this during my tenure so vote for me <laughs> or it could also be because they want to build other charitable institutions so for example old age homes orphanage homes they require a school so therefore they build a school actually the school wasn't the agenda of the whole governmental thing but because though those things really required the schools they did I don't know why old age homes come here but again all orphanages may require a school old age because they have all these institutions maybe a school will complete that so that will that will be a thing building a social welfare system a lot of times governments do that because societies can benefit from free education that is again funded by the tax money and more authoritarian models so for example um the bureau bureaucracy so companies that are that are that have alliance with the government uh like the oil money or things that are fetched from natural resources that go into the government's pockets and those actually fund uh the social welfare system that give access to you know more free education again free education uh is again education nevertheless so that's going to bring about the benefits that you get from basic education so so that comes with tax money as well. So a person, the percentage of your tax money, all that's maybe charitable. You can call this charitable. Or it can be called, called as public welfare, uh, whatever you want to call that. It could also be. It could also be called commercial. So for example, uh, you're 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 basically doing it for the collective, but you're doing it for your family, okay, or for any structure like or any community. Uh, you're doing it. Uh, you want to give, take all that money and give it to somebody else, okay, and give it to a different family. You want to start. You you want to you build a school to basically support your family, not for yourself. Okay, so uh, now uh, building trust in relationships is also a very important um, commercial agenda of schools. So for example, so for example, uh, people want to uh, like. <sighs> So, for example, the agenda of the schools is to produce people who uh, who are more into social justice side. So, for example, they want to promote social justice. People are being, uh, people are being, you know, for example, um, being denigrated. Being people are being uh, mistreated in the society. So, we need to have people who are striving for justice. So, so we have. Social justice are sometimes postmodernist, sometimes communist, sometimes they're ignorant. I don't know. I'm trying to be so negative or pessimistic here, but social justice again uh, can also be painted in the positive light. But basically, uh, a lot of times, building safe environments is the agenda uh, of you know, of sometimes left left leaning side of politics can also can also produce <laughs> building safe environments right will also produce safe environments but when you say building safe environments uh, for a commercial agenda so they, they will make money and that making that money will to will actually promote them in the status symbol and promote trust amongst the people so trust in and build better relationships so uh, the whole society and the society outside or people can can be can befriend us because we're creating um, a safe environment and the way you produce uh, trust is by producing safety and survival as we talked in the last video the most fundamental human need is survival so if you can if you can facilitate that you are a very useful person so again so you have the left and the right side both the left-leading and the right-leading um, 
political uh, candidacy ca candidates and the uh, people uh, will will say that they want to produce safe safe environments. Now, when the right leaning people say safe environment, they mean something different from when the when the left says uh, safe environment. They want to produce an environment that is social justice, so socially just, okay, uh, in the equality of outcome. Sometimes the equality of outcome, in my opinion, is wrong. So sometimes it's, it's an ignorance. They come from postmodernists, which is the idea that everything is relative. There is no such thing as absolute truth. So basically everything is uh, perspective driven. So there is that doesn't exist absolute structures or absolute truths. Um, when you come to the left, they also come trying to promote equality and diversity. So diversity can be diversity of ideas or diversity of identity. Now identity can again be divided into language, culture. So they want to promote more cultures, more philosophies, philosophies that can be a little flexible, philosophies that are rigid, things that are more structured and things that are more like loosely uh, structured. So philosophies, new not new languages, new cultures, the diversity, diversity of ideas. So people, the left, they want to promote different identities. People come here and they try to build a better home here. So things like that. And also because they want to make more progressive candidates. So entrepreneurs and creative types. So they're more progressive types. So they really want to say, let's keep progressing. I want updated systems. So with that, that's a, that, that actually promotes a more safe environment because if you are, if you can all be progressive, you can all become the one type, then we have no conflicts, right? That promotes safe environments. And if you can all do that, we can promote trusted relationships. All right. So the right will all the right wing also says that they want to print so for safe environments one of the things is they can make money to basically preserve law and order they, they can teach values that will preserve law and order pre preservation of identity so for example traditional values need to be uh, preserved safety and security of the people so things like national security values and those things like that national nationalism national security all those things are basically preserved in those things so commercial agenda is done acceptable in the student society political agenda and we're done with this uh, we're done with the structural goals let's understand the the student side so one of the things you need to understand is that a student has uh, come across different comes across different touch points so we have skills a student wants to get a job sometimes they want to become a uh, I mean they want to be useful to the economy right so they want to have analytical thinking they want to have language and communication they need to be able to talk uh, to as many people and expand their horizons and also to be able to think so using uh, first principles thinking so for example you want to understand uh, everything from the first principles and then build your pro build your uh, build your systems from the first principles or you can become an engineer basically trying to uh, trying to when you think about engineers we try to study different parts and try to put them together. That's the engineering way of thinking, but systems way of thinking. You can be a systems thinker and an, and an engineer. I don't. I I don't think this has to be a completely different track. I just I, I'm just talking about this in the context of thinking here. So design thinking is very similar to that of uh, systems thinking. Now. Yes, both of them are similar in that both of them aim to. When we talk about systems thinking, it's. Design thinking is built on the idea of iteration. So you want to build something that people actually want. So you build iteration. They don't actually jump directly to the making of solutions. So they keep identifying if uh, if the problem that you're going after or the solution that you're going after is something that people actually want. So you, the end goal is something you produce something that people actually want. The aim of systems thinking is to produce a balanced loop, not necessarily to produce something. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, there is systems thinking again. Is you need to understand relationship and connections, deep thinking. So deep thinking is you understand okay uh, what everything implies. So for example, what does uh, emancipation? So emancipation can also be emancipation from. 
uh, your parents' emancipation from, let's say, your, uh, your let's say, em emancipation from your traditional structures like religion. So you can emancipate from yourself, or whatever that is. So you need to be able to understand what the consequences for it, and you can understand a complex model of your thing. So constructing in balance, constructing balanced loops. So as I mentioned, so how can you understand, you know, different structures? Now articulation, as I said, is uh, is incredibly important because it allows you to communicate, negotiate, mass communicate to do speeches, so you can actually promote your product to have arguments to have debates so you can uh, debate your point for example again uh, whether it be collective or individual your identity or your person whatever that is is being uh, underrepresented misrepresented you could be having the ability to communicate so that's a, a very important skill that comes under articulation it comes under systems thinking and that that comes from the ability to think and that's so reducing biases so for example, can we think first what exactly is the complexity of the problem and then we can come up with a solution. So rationalism is, well, um, uh, so when we talk about rationalism, here in this context what we're talking about is can we rationally just point out all the problems first and then we think the full system first and then we can think about, okay, so this, 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 all of these exist. Now what we want to do here. Can we understand different perspectives, being bipartisan? For example, uh, especially in politics, when we're far into the left, we're far into the right, that results in political po political polarization. So that gives us, this, that, that lands us in a situation where we cannot sympathize or even understand the different side of the perspective. That's not good either. So that's the side, the side of thinking here. Analytical thinking is also definitely important. Maths and, and, and programming and uh, being able to to combine two different concepts. Now, systems thinking can also depend on analytical thinking. Social life, again, the, one of the reasons why schools are successful is, is because they facilitate all these things. That the degree of effectiveness is not so much. So, uh, if you go to schools, you have colleagues. Sometimes you will build your people. So, some of the people you will work with in the future, some of them are just friends that you don't necessarily work with, but just uh, just hang around with and sometimes they become your relationships people you live your life with and become your mentors and teachers either for the time being or for the rest of your life they also could uh your students they also i mean your school life could also build credibility for you so they basically give you a degree certification and awards some other times everything that schools live for is credibility but from a student's perspective they award them credibility so that they can uh so that they can actually become accepted by the society accepted by the job force and everything so opportunities so when you talk about opportunities uh, uh you know a, st a, 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 a traditional structure actually allows like i said when you're put into a system when you're put into an environment you're put into you're put into the environment from every side so environment is a system right so again you're put you have to live with it or in it so what that means is you'll you'll be allowed to uh, to explore different things so pop culture and progressive ideas you can actually explore different weird things that you, it's kind of difficult to achieve at your home or things like film comedy music whether it be different kinds of music like acapella songs instrumental uh, things like guitars or cello or all these things are extremely <laughs> expensive things so how can you explore different areas and sort of uh, and, 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 then, and then figure out things about yourself so opportunities are resources utilization so things like a library so academic literature the empirical studies research so how can you be able, how can you think well you need to understand and you, you need to see how the past researchers have thought about things so how does academic thinking work so uh, academic literatures work we have how arguments are placed how debates are how how debates actually work so for that we need to understand the different kinds of research causal research relational research how the two things are related how can you argue how can you sort of you know how can you relate to different concepts how can you make implications how can you like for example if you want to argue that you know this is true you need to tell okay these two things are related or these two things it's because of this that this happened 
So you need to know how to gather data. So how can you how can you produce data that are, that is authentic? How can you how can you produce data that is that is uh, how can you analyze data? So those things are incredibly important things that you learn from library. That I don't know if it's kind of difficult to achieve all of that because again, as I said, schools are are uh, the, how how effective they are is a different discussion. But the fact that they are a system is is the reason why it's sufficient. The reason why it's, it, it it survives till today. Sports. Okay, so you have different clubs and teams. You join a club, you join a team, and you learn. You, you socialize with different people. You also have an in, in, uh, international environment. You can go to different. You know, you can go to different uh, countries as part of your exchange program. Uh, you you are, you have a systematic change. You can also uh, access different cultural views, so metaphorical language of different cultures. So when you mingle with different cultures, you'll understand things like, for example, in India we do this to actually symbolize uh, accept acceptance or sort of agreeable. I mean, we. Uh, uh, we, uh, when we agree with something, we nod our head. So these things are things that you might not find in Google Translate. Things, cultural expressions. So things like you know, uh, you know, understanding the metaphorical language allows you to design later on products. In if you're becoming an entrepreneur with global reach. So for example, you want to understand how to reach a particular culture. If you had a friend from that, and you're back in your school, you. It may not be. I mean, I mean, you only had a friend or two, but at least that gives you, you know, how oh, look. I need to think about this because my friend did this at this time, so I need to ask him. I need to call him up. I, I can, I can talk to more people from this identity if I, if I can speak to him now. So that gives you an opportunity to design products with global reach, so it sympathizes and understands people from different cultures. You don't, you don't. So that you don't design products that people don't want. All right. So you can also expand your connections again to whatever to to expanding your connections has different impacts. So you can again then uh, leverage on them to build your business or build partnerships. Um, and and understand and empathize with the community. For example. So for example, you can understand holistic pictures of society. So you can understand why they do what they do, and then you can make a decision. So culture, it can also lead to cultural appropriation. So the cultural appropriation is basically, I try to do one part of your culture thing. So for example, if you wear something, I'll try to wear that. I mean, for example, me trying to wear something like, um, uh, let's say, for example, me trying to wear the the Arab apparel. So for example, the Abaya thing. Um, maybe or maybe not, that's cultural appropriation. So that's like, I'm trying to, so if I wear somebody, if I, if I, if I go to a country and if I'm trying to be accepted or not just accepted, but if I want to make him feel happy, I, I would try to wear his clothes and I would say, hey, listen, we're one and the same. So that's like cultural appropriation. So that's like either they can do as an effort to, to as, a, 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 as a way to, to, to make fun of somebody, either in, 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 in the light sense or in, in the sense to hurt somebody. So you can also, cultural appropriation, sometimes you can go and uh, <laughs> and you can try to inaccurately represent the culture. A good example would be if you try to see the representation of uh, Indian culture in a lot of Hollywood movies. Um, they try to show like, a lot of colorful um, backgrounds. India is definitely colorful, but it's not as colorful as uh, as it's said as it as it is uh, shown in, let's say, cold place uh, movie. I mean, there are certain inaccuracies with cultural appropriation. So it could be as a result of ignorance, or it could be intentional ignorance. So initiative towards cultural inclusion. Sometimes they just want you to be happy, so they just do it like you know uh, that's. You know, let's try to uh, let's try to be a part of it. So, cultural appropriation can be a consequence of exposure to cultural views. So, 
So that's opportunity. So from an organizational point of view, so we have a public and private image. So there are two kinds of institutions. One is a public institution. A public institution can be uh, can be designed for social welfare or basically because they want to have accessibility. So immigrants can come here. They can be included in the society. They can understand the language of the local uh, locals. They can have. They can be participant of the societies. They can join different clubs that this local place has. So they can be included in the in the society that they have so for example you immigrate to a new culture a new country then the government creates public institution public schools so that you can go and participate in the society and understand the language and be a part of the society and uh, contribute to the economy so or they can also be government can create institutions or public institutions could be designed to facilitate a, uh, disabled individuals so if you have any physical uh, any physical uh, physical disabilities, like people, uh, institutions for the blind, institutions for the for the people uh, for the for the people with, with with hearing disabilities or physical disabilities, mental disabilities. So, uh, so specific institutions that are like, for example, dyslexic institutions and things like that, right? So those are uh, are special institutions designed for those. Uh, private institutions could have a specific motivation. So. Here, motivation here defines the. Uh, we're going with actually the. If I can go open this up, I think it's. Uh, so every institution has a motivation. I've actually plotted this out. Um, if I'm correct, where is it? Uh, okay, so here motivation actually refers to the structural goals. So. That's why it's green in color. So what I'm trying to say is that, is that over here sometimes institutions are private in nature because they want to have uh, the structural goals of let's say commercial agenda. They can be acceptable in the, so uh, in the student society, or they can have religious agenda or political agenda. So private schools can have any kind of motivation, like political, religious, again, uh, commercial, whatever that is. Uh, they can also have identity and control. So each uh, each school wants to preserve its identity, wants to have an identity. Uh, they can also they can control its resources. So, for example, uh, the government says, "I will not fund this thing," so I don't want to do it. So that's why uh, there's a misspelling over here. It's organization. Okay, it's organization. I'm sorry. So anyway, so that's about the system here. So what can we do? So again, as I say, my proposal is we have dynamic thinking. Uh, we also talked about a solution to this, such as um, balanced moderation systems thinking, the ability to think, the ability to have a an overall development, uh, the ability to be able to sympathize and to be able to understand different cultures safe and bar and to be able to have deep thinking in all those skills that should be the agenda of schools in my opinion and we should try to build more holistic um systems with that said guys if you like this video please be sure to subscribe to this channel like this video because it helps the channel and i shall see you guys in another video very soon